Is it possible you actually work at a different branch of Her Majesty's government? Oh my. One of the things I loved about the script when I first read it was that it sort of told me more about the cost of, if you like, sort of deception. It will just be a career. Just a career for Russian sea. From now on, you will be selling one thing. The idea that you are an ordinary businessman and nothing more than an ordinary businessman. And, you know, one of the ideas in the film is sometimes lying is good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And when, when we're in the world of military military strategy and secrecy, lying is a really good idea. We don't want or, withhold, or withholding of truth. We do not want everyone to know what is going on in a military campaign or in an espionage situation. Um, and but the cost of that is great. Having to lie to your wife about what you're doing every day is going to be a really hard thing to manage and you know they my understanding is you know they didn't understand or care that much at that time about the effect that these things would have on their operatives uh, such things weren't sort of in the ether um and one wouldn't necessarily be given help in how to manage lying to your wife and family about what you were doing and i thought sort of thought the pain of that was really well written and i there's one scene in sort of trauma is really playing out in the family and uh, he's so close to telling her he's so close to telling his wife um uh, but he resists he has to sort of resist doing that um and i think that you know the marriage actually broke down in the end his marriage broke down and i'm not sure it was particularly just to do with that i think it was to do with what happened to him immediately after he got back because he did have a sort of colossal nervous what was described at the time as a nervous breakdown um and i think he he wasn't helped out of the trauma that he'd been through at all. Uh, he was sort of plonked back into society and given a pension, which is something, uh, but expected to sort of handle it and, and, and get on with life. And um, he didn't even have the experience. Say, you, say you'd been in a military situation and you'd had some terrible trauma, at least there might be some concept, some, some sort of comfort in, and you all know more about this than me, I'm just speculating, mm. in the fact there were other people who went through the same thing with you. Mm. The issue with, with Greville Wynn is he was totally on his own. So his experience was utterly lonely. I tell you, I'm really interested, I suppose, in what the big psychological barriers are for people who have experienced trauma yeah sort of coming back to civilian life or to regular life and sort of um trying to integrate their experience into the sort of lives that the rest of us are leading for me um trust that's that's the first word that comes up and uh as, as a major issue so in in encouraging somebody to engage in any kind of process to even recognize the difficulty within themselves is, is huge, really. It takes an incredible amount of courage, but trust is a huge element. And that's why what we know statistically is that the largest percentage of psychological difficulties that um, military veterans experience on discharge from the military, particularly medical discharge, is from a psychological perspective is what is classed as an adjustment disorder. Yeah. Um, so very often that's about exactly as you describe there, an adjustment from a very specific set of circumstances where your trust is within a specific circle uh, and group of people under specific conditions to then being thrown, in, thrown into a wider world of having to adjust to a very different set of circumstances. Yeah, and, and that is, is exactly what happened to me. I think anybody that's military thinks in a slightly different way. Yeah. There's kind of a, a set of of rules and regulations that get tattooed on you and your insides when you, you, you you're kind of molded to think in a certain way, I think, and you react to certain situations in a certain way. And I think most people's moral compasses are generally set in the same direction. And to try and deal with a system where that might be slightly skewed and very different to what you're used to is half mm. of the problem. Right, um, interesting. I think so. That yeah. uh, and yeah. you know, when you've you've only known something for 20, 25 years, it's very difficult. Uh, and then there's all the normal stresses of families and mortgages and all mm, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Everybody else has to deal with. But I think Sarah's exactly right. It's trust. Yeah. Mm. And trying to think, and I know for me, giving yourself the um, permission to be unwell. 
Thank you. I've really enjoyed that conversation. Thank you. That was you wonderful. Do great really stuff, good. you guys. Wonderful. All the best. Take care. volunteering to bring back the best source of Soviet intelligence you've got at a time where Russia and America are on the brink of nuclear war. Maybe we're only two people, but this is how things change.